Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So today I am going to talk about mid cap investing. We are standing at a very interesting juncture in the stock markets right now that the market is very very volatile. Some days it's going up, some days it's going down. So in that context, mid cap stocks are presenting a great opportunity for us to analyze further and take some positions. So I have identified three specific stocks that I'm going to talk about. But before that, very quick set of disclaimers. First and foremost, mid cap investing is risky. It's very, very risky compared to large cap investing or blue chip stock investing. So when you are taking positions in small cap or mid cap stock, be very, very mindful. According to some estimates, only 10% of mid caps grow on to becoming multi cap stocks. So it is extremely risky. Second point, if you are a beginner in the stock market and if you don't know much about individual stock picking, please do not start with individual mid cap stocks because of the fact that these are risky. A better strategy would be that if you say that Akshat, large cap, I understand that these are great, but they don't also give like very high returns. I'm looking for something risky. Then you can consider investing via mid cap mutual funds. That is still much better rather than you directly trying to pick up something which is super risky. This is the second key point. Next important point, when I say mid cap stocks, what exactly do I mean? So these are list of stocks that have been curated by NSE, right? So this is the NSE's website. And if you go and take a list of this download list of Nifty mid cap 50 stocks, you will get an entire list of Nifty 50 stocks. And I'm going to speak about some of these stocks on today's video. Next, very, very important point, And this is the final point I'll speak about for beginners and intermediate level players in the stock market that sometimes we end up investing in instruments that we don't have a complete understanding of. For example, if you're looking to invest in mutual funds, which are mid cap oriented, then even NSC has given a different bifurcation of these index funds. For example, there is a Nifty index fund called as Nifty mid cap 50, right? Many a times we just call our mutual fund agent and we say that, you know what, we want to invest in mid cap mutual funds and you will end up investing your money in nifty mid cap 50. Okay. Now this is slightly more riskier compared to the second index that is run on NSE. It is called as nifty mid cap 50 quality 50, right? Both are mid caps, but there is a very important difference here. The important difference being that when it comes to mid cap 150 quality 50, there is a quality filter that has been aggregated as you can read from the website. 50 companies with high profitability, lower leverage and more stable earnings are selected to be a part of this index, right? This is not a market cap weighted index. This is driven by quality. This is a very important point. In case you're looking to take positions in mid cap index fund, then a better option is to go with mid cap 150 quality 50 index. So do check out the historical performance of this index before you invest. But also be aware of the high risks involved because mid caps are a highly volatile space after all. Now to make investments in mid cap 150 quality 50, you can check out the link in the description box. I've given a link to DSP's mutual fund there. You can check it out. Now, if you're a direct stock investor, the next few minutes on this video are going to be critical. So please watch it end to end. First and foremost, let me give you a breakup of where we stand in terms of mid cap stocks in the market right now. So you will see that if you check it from the recent top, the mid cap stocks have corrected by approximately nine and a half percent. If you take a look at the Nifty 50 index, it has corrected again by 9%. So the fall has been proportional both for Nifty mid cap and Nifty overall. Nifty overall is the collection of all the major stocks in India. Nifty mid cap is the collection of 50 mid cap stocks in India, right? So that's the index comparison that I'm doing. Now, a very important point that I want to highlight about Nifty mid cap is that this was a support level, which Nifty mid cap has broken very recently. Now, the second major support level starts here, right? This is the second major support level for Nifty mid cap stocks. Now, how far below is it from its current base? So it is approximately nine and a half percent more. So what I'm trying to say is that if Nifty mid cap falls from this point, there is a very high likelihood that the mid cap stocks are going to correct by nine and a half percent, nine and a half percent. This means two things. One is that you should be little bit cautious in terms of taking more mid cap positions right now. Wait a little bit, see the trend in the market, then only take B. If you get an option of buying a ton of mid cap stocks here, then you should absolutely do it, right? Because this is a very strong support level, right? Very, very strong support level here. So if the nifty mid cap falls to this point, you could consider buying a lot of mid cap stocks. Therefore, this video is extremely critical and important. 
Now, let me talk about three specific stocks that I'm keeping a very close eye on. I am an investor in all these three stocks already. But if the mid cap stocks fall more, then I'm going to downward average these stocks. What is meant by downward averaging? Someone please comment and explain it. And people who are new to my channel, please read the comment section. These are full of critical insights. So the first mid cap that I'm very bullish about is Bata India. Right now it is available at an attractive price. I have been an old investor of Bata. I have held this share for quite a while now. Right now, if you take a look at Bata India, you will see that the stock price has roughly fallen by almost 18 and a half percent, right, from its recent peak. So good time to consider aggregating this stock because if the mid gap falls by 9% more, Bata is also going to fall with it. So you can aggregate even more. Please make sure that in terms of your buying, please aggregate these type of stocks and small, small dips only. Please don't go and plow in all your money in one go, right? Please don't do that. That's really bad. So buy and aggregate, this is not a stock recommendation per se, but at least you could start looking into this stock more closely. Why am I saying that this is a good stock, right? So let me just take you through the journey of Bata. Let me help you understand it more. So if you take a look at sales growth, the sales have been growing quite prominently. Last year was the worst year for footwear companies because hardly any sale happened. People were not going out of their homes. And usually when you buy a shoe and you know you don't go out, for one year, then you will continue to use that shoe for a long, long time. So from that perspective, there was a dip in sales and that was the only year where the sales were thrashed a little bit. Last 12 months, sales has been coming back and this is also reflected in terms of net profit. That last year company was taking a loss because it had a lot of fixed capacity. They still had to pay rent on their factories, rent on their showrooms, keep a certain core employees in play. So all that stuff was there. Now the things are coming back on track. Now many of you would say, Akshay, third wave of COVID is coming. I understand and it can hit a business like Bata, but please understand this, that the first wave of COVID was the most uncertain one. We did not know how to deal with it. Governments did not have any protocols in play. Maybe now also they don't have any protocols in play. I can't comment on that. But the bottom line right now is that there is no way, there is absolutely no way that complete economies will get shut for a very long period of time as it happened during the first wave. So it's not going to impact Bata's business to that extent even if something bad happens. And from a long-term perspective, this is a solid play. Why do I say it? Because if you actually take a look at its balance sheet, you will see that Bata is a company that has constantly expanded its capacity. There were hardly two, three years when it has not undertaken capacity expansion. But other than that, even recently, it has purchased more fixed assets. What does that indicate? They are expecting sales to go up in the coming times. There is absolutely no reason why they would be expanding upon their capacity and producing more and more product if they knew that they are not going to sell it. So the sales are going to pick up, economy is supporting it and the stock is available at a decent price at my level for you to start aggregating it. I'm not saying go and pour all your money on Bata in just one go, but this can be a good initiation point for you if you're not an investor in Bata. Now the second key stock that I would like to discuss is Page Industries. I had made a separate video on this topic altogether, analyzing Page Industries. You can take a look at this video here to get a more thorough understanding of Page Industries. But right now, something very interesting is happening with the stock. The stock has fallen more than the fall in mid cap Nifty. So the stock has fallen by roughly 10% and Nifty mid cap has fallen by 9.1%. Now, a stock like Page Industry does not fall much. That's A. B, I'm not saying that go and invest your money right now because a great support zone for something like Page Industries exist here, right? So if the stock falls to this level, I'm going to purchase more of the quantities that I have for something like Page Industries. So this is an excellent buying zone. Please keep a track of it. In my opinion, you should actually seriously look at aggregating something like Page Industries for the long term. It's a wonderful company. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the business. Why do I say it? Let me just take you through some numbers that will make more sense. Now, if you take a look at the business of Page Industries, you will clearly see that the sales have been up. Sales have become 10x in a matter of 10 years, which is insane, right? Which is literally insane. This is excellent performance both from a net profit perspective, if you take a look at profits, profits have also become 10x, right? 10, 11x, brilliant, right? 10 years, 10 times profits. This is literally like one of the India's brilliant growth stories. More importantly, if you check my video on Page Industry, Page Industry has acquired the license of Speedo, which is a swimwear brand. It is a sports brand. They are expanding more aggressively into female wear segment. They are expanding more aggressively into child wear segment and all these different, different segments. So there are very clear growth plans for the company. They have a manufacturing and distribution moat. What do I mean by manufacturing and distribution moat? Because they had the license of Jockey, which is their prominent brand. 
they have been able to scale up their operations all across India, build a very great distribution network, very loyal set of distributors. Through that same distribution channel, they are going to distribute their other products in which they are entering. Whenever India expands upon its bull run story, something like page industry, which has a history of building and expanding on great brands at a profitable pace and at an aggressive sales pace, these type of companies are going to benefit the most in my opinion. So therefore, page industry is a stock where you need to look at much, much more closely. Please pay close attention to that level that I had previously explained that if the stock falls to this level, 34,000 levels, I am going to buy in big quantities. That is my investment plan. Now, the third stock that I'm keeping a very close eye on is AU Small Finance Bank. Now, why am I so bullish about the stock? Let me first very quickly explain you the price charting of it, right? So right now, the bank has fallen by approximately 20% from its recent peak. Why has it fallen more compared to the other two stocks? Because this is a finance stock, especially banking loans. So finance sector falls first whenever there is any correction in the stock market. So nothing off from that perspective. Don't assume because AU has fallen by 20%. So it's more risky compared to other things. No, nothing like that. It's a finance stock. The nature of banking finance is such that it falls first whenever the correction happens. And it is the first to rise up first also when the market starts to grow. Now, the stock is already available at a good price point in my understanding. So if I have to buy one of these three stocks today, I'll invest more of my money in AU Small Finance from that perspective. The risk that I see in AU Small Finance right now is that if the mid caps correct by another 9 or 10 percent, I definitely feel then AU small finance will correct by 5 more percent from that perspective. Now, let me just very quickly take you through the business model of AU small finance because I haven't made a detailed video on this. In case you want, I'll make a separate video on AU small finance. Just comment below. I will take it up separately. But one very important product breakup that I would want you to take a look at is the loan breakup that it is giving out loans, but it is giving out majority of the loans to priority sector lending PSL, right? and very few loans to non-priority sector. So this is not competing with something like ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank, Kotec Bank or IDFC First Bank. It is competing in a different customer base altogether. So from that perspective, there is absolutely nothing wrong with AU Small Finance Bank because as the rural sector picks up, as the rural demand picks up, as rural consumption increases, all these trends are already happening. With that, something like AU Small Finance, Equita Small Finance Bank will definitely grow. Right now, I don't have very big positions in AU Small Finance Bank because I have already purchased a lot of Equitas Small Finance Bank, but I've started to take more positions in AU Small Finance and I have already made my first purchase now. Now, why am I bullish about AU Small Finance? If you take a look at company's performance from 2010, okay, so nothing more for me to say. It has literally exponentially grown its revenues. Same is the story with profits from 12 crore profits is now sitting at 1130 crores profit. This is like a dream story, right? So from that perspective, it has been one of the fastest, one of the most consistent performer. And there is absolutely no reason why it would not do that. It has successfully worn out the pandemic. It has successfully and profitably grown its sales, which is a great sign. Also, if you take a look at its balance sheet, you will again see that the fixed assets have been growing at an exponential pace. It shows that the company is not afraid to grow. It is growing at a massive scale. It is redeploying its profit, it is redeploying more capital in terms of its capacity and infrastructure expansion, which is a great sign for any business. So in conclusion, I've discussed with you three stocks, three very different buying strategies. Please keep an overall eye out for mid cap stocks because the mid cap stocks can correct a lot. If you're a beginner, please do not jump into buying mid cap stocks right off the bat. It is okay for you to start taking positions with index investing first because mid cap and small cap stocks are risky. Again, putting out that disclaimer and you can check out DSP's mutual fund for that. It's a very well curated mutual fund from that perspective. If you are investing directly in stock, please start with taking small, small positions and then consolidate your positions over time. Either upward average it or downward average it. Don't go and invest all your money in one go because you might not be able to stomach the volatility. If you see the market fall by another 10%, yeah, you will go berserk, right? That, hey, I bought like a mid cap and it fell by 10%. Should I just sell it off? No, right? That is for highly seasoned investors. If you do not understand that viewpoint, then please don't take bulk positions. It's a recipe for disaster. You will lose your sleep. So I hope you will keep these points in mind and explore this wonderful world of mid cap stocks also. They grow a lot. I have invested a lot of money in mid caps as well. And I'm quite confident that they will become a very important part of India's growth story. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Press the like button and I will see you the next time. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.